keeping the charge of the Lord our God. Second Chronicles 13th chapter verses 10, 11. In King James Version, it is there as we keep the charge of the Lord our God. As for us, the Lord is our God. As for us, the Lord is our God. And we have not forsaken Him. And we have not forsaken Him. And the priest who minister to the Lord. And the priests who minister to the Lord. Are the sons of Aaron. Are the sons of Aaron. And the Levites. And the Levites. Attend to their duties. To their duties. And they burn to the Lord. And they burn to the Lord every morning. And every evening. And every evening. Burnt sacrifices. Burnt sacrifices. And sweet incense. Sweet incense. They also set the showbread. They also set the showbread in order. In order. On the pure gold table. On the pure gold table. And the lampstand. And the lampstand of gold. With its lamp to burn. With its lamp to burn. Every evening, for we keep the command of the Lord. For we God. keep the command of the Lord our God, or we keep the charge of the Lord our God. But you have forsaken him. But you have forsaken him. Hallelujah. Who's saying this? Please read verse one. In the 18th year of King Jeroboam, uh, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, Abijah became king of Judah. Abijah became king of over Judah. Hallelujah. The 18th year of King Jeroboam. We know about the history. After David, his son Solomon reigned Israel. And after Solomon, because of his unfaithfulness towards God, he departed from God and uh, seeking other gods. God, in the time period of his son, Rehoboam, uh, the kingdom was divided into two. Ten tribes were given to Cherubim and twenty-two tribes were under uh, Solomon's son. And then Rehavan's son, Abijah, he came to the room and these are the words of the king of Judah, Abijah. And but when I was thinking, I've never seen any good thing, any good report on this king. Uh, and it is recorded in the uh, here he speaks about the Lord. He says, for us, we have, the Lord is our God. And he says, we keep the challenge of the Lord our God. He speaks to this, his enemies. Hallelujah. He speaks to King uh, Cherubah, King of Israel. But in the book of uh, the kings, there it is written about that we are saying that, so we can read that also, so that we will know, we will have a better picture of the person, but we are not going to meditate on this king, but in this one particular place, he has given a very good, hallelujah, uh, what to say, sermon I would say, and uh, that we were going to take it, here in first kings, read that. 15th chapter verses 1 to 8. It speaks about King Abijah. Please read it. Verse uh, we can uh, read verse 3 about the king. Mm. And he walked in all the sins of his father. And he walked in all the sins of his father. Which he, which he had done before him. Which he had done before him. His heart was not loyal to the Lord. His heart was not loyal to his Lord. 
his god his god as was the heart of his father david as was the heart of his father david hmm nevertheless okay we'll go right from there to another verse hallelujah verse 6 And there was, was yeah, verse 7 we can read. Now the rest of the acts of Abijah mm. and all that he did, all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles? Are they not written in the books of the Chronicles? Of the kings of Judah. Of the kings of Judah. And there was war between. And there was war between. Abijah mm. and Jeroboam. Amen. There was war between these two kings and verse 8. So Abijah rested with his father. Yeah, there is nothing more written about this king. But here in Chronicles we read how he boldly speaks to on the face of his enemies, and also how how he finds the Hallelujah glory to God result over there. We are seeing there in that place. We'll come back to Second Chronicles, so chapter thirteen, uh, verses ten and eleven. We saw he says. We have kept the we keep the charge of the Lord our God, but you have forsaken Him. He's speaking to the Israelites. He's speaking to King Jeroboam. Because and because of that, he says, verse twelve. Now look, God Himself is with us as our head, and His priests with sounding trumpets to sound the alarm against you, the enemies. O children of Israel, do not fight against the Lord God of your fathers, for you shall not prosper. He is boldly speaking on the face of the enemies because he was so confident of he was so so confident because of him and the whole other Hallelujah, his kingdom, Judah, keeping the charge of the Lord his God. That is why he has the confidence there, right? With the confidence, he speaks boldly to the enemies. And what was the net result of that? Here, the, the end of the chapter we read, verse nineteen and twenty. Abijah pursued Jeroboam and took cities from him. And took cities from him. Bethel with its villages. And Bethel with its villages. Jeshana. Ah, uh, Jeshana. With its with its villages. And Ephraim with its villages. Hallelujah. So Jeroboam did not recover strength again in the days of Abijah. Hallelujah. And the Lord struck him. And he died. Hallelujah. This Rehoboam, king of Israel, he did not regain, recover strength in the days of Abijah. And the Lord also struck him, and he died. In the previous verse also was some of the verses we read. Verse eighteen. Thus the children of Israel were subdued at that time. And the children of Judah prevailed. See, children of Israel subdued because they forsaken the Lord their God. But children of Judah, Hallelujah, they prevailed because they relied on the Lord God of their fathers. Forsaking the law of our Lord and or relying on the Lord, Hallelujah. That depends, Hallelujah, on how we. Hallelujah. Progress in our Christian life. Amen. Depending on the Lord, relying on the Lord, our God will help us to face the challenges, face the enemies, and be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We forsake. That's what He speaks boldly to the people of Israel. And so. These are the things, but we are going to meditate on the two verses. How he speaks, he speaks to the children of Israel, saying, "But as for us, the Lord is our God." What? Because the children of Israel, Jeroboam, they made them to go astray by making bold calves. Verse eight. Now you think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord, which is in the hand of the sons of David, 
and you are a great multitude, and with you are the gold cross which Jehovah made for you as gods. Hallelujah. And also he says, have you not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron and the Levites, and made for yourselves priests like the peoples of the other of other lands? So that whoever come to, comes to consecrate himself with a young bull and seven rams may be a priest of things that are not God's. Hallelujah. And again he says, continue saying that then only, but as for us, the Lord is our God. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the challenge always comes before the children of God, though we Hallelujah, glory to God. Have the Lord God as our Lord. But still, in Joshua also, he challenges people of Israel. And for as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Who are you going to serve? Amen. Prophet Elijah, he challenges people of Israel, saying that how long will you hold between two opinions? If God is your, the Lord God is your God, worship Him. If Baal is your God, worship Him. Don't hold between two opinions. Amen. That means you cannot, how, do you, how are you expecting to serve the Lord your God? With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might. In Old Testament, you draw me know that if you read, you clearly know. The Lord expects complete, whole. Hallelujah. Of your heart. If it is divided and given to something else and somebody else, Hallelujah, then we cannot claim as the Lord is our God. Hallelujah. So, the place of God, you have to, the first place, preeminence, importance should be given to God in our place, in our lives. Hallelujah. Even in the Old Testament, in Isaiah, and even uh, the same thing Jesus Christ quotes also, saying that these people, they draw to me with their lips, but in their hearts, they are far behind. Hallelujah. That's the thing. People don't see, people don't see uh, God, they're not able to seek God because, with, the, with all their hearts, because some other things, or things of the world, cares of the world, hallelujah, so many other things come and occupy the hearts of people. Only very little space is available for God. Hallelujah. That's why seeking God has become very uh, mechanical or duty sake. People seek God, but not with all their hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So we have to understand that and God is always concerned and He wants His total, our total devotion to Him. Amen. Total devotion to Him. God wants complete devotion. So He says, but as for us, the Lord is our God. We have to understand that and uh, keep our whole life because um, idolatry means we know in New Testament covetousness, hallelujah, is equal to idolatry. <coughs> so, the love for money or love for position, love for any earthly things, these can be called as covetousness or Id idolatry. Hallelujah. And also in, uh, in, in Sam, Samuel, Prophet Samuel speaks to King Saul, he says, um, rebelliousness is equal to witchcraft and stubbornness equal to idolatry. Amen. Stubborn or oh, spirit, stubborn against God. It's counted as idolatry in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. So here he says, as for us, the Lord is our God. Then he says, we have not forsaken. That is, we are meditating on how to keep the charge of the Lord our God. And here he says, we have not forsaken him. Hallelujah. We say we don't forsake, we, we don't forsake, we have not forsaken the Lord. 
But the word of God says that unbelief will lead you, Allah will take you away from the Lord your God. Amen. Please read that Hebrews chapter 3. Mm. You have read it. Yeah, chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Mm. We were brethren. Beware, brethren. Lest there be in any of you. Lest there be in any of you. An evil heart of unbelief. An evil heart of unbelief. In departing from the living God. In departing from the living God. He evil heart of unbelief. Which will make you unbelief. To depart from the living God. Physically, monotonously, we may seek God. But if you have the unbelief that is evil, hallelujah, oh, in your heart, at heart, it will make you to depart from the Lord your God. Hallelujah. So never give room for unbelief. Amen. It's a dangerous weapon of the enemy. And even in uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse Please read that verse 5. Jeremiah 17 and 5. There the prophet says, Thus says the Lord, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man, Cursed is the man, Who trusts in man, Who trusts in man, And makes flesh his strength, And makes flesh his strength, Whose heart, Whose heart, Departs from the Lord, Departs from the Lord. Amen. He says, whose heart departs from the Lord? Who is this man? Those who put their trust in man. Or the flesh is strength. Hallelujah. If you put your trust in man, or any other thing other than our Lord God Almighty, or in your own strength, if you put your trust in your own strength, the word of God says, such hearts will definitely, for sure, depart, will depart from the Lord. Amen. They'll try all the level best. When they fail only, they will try to seek God. Hallelujah. So we have to understand that. Whose heart departs from the Lord? So our trust should be on the Lord our God alone. Amen. Never to depart right or left. And the same chapter, verse 7 speaks about the blessedness of the man who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. Amen. Which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when he comes but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Amen. Continual blessing. Those who put their trust in the Lord their God. Amen. So here now King Abijah speaks to uh, Jeremiah and their company, Israel, people of Israel, saying that Oh, we have not departed or we have not forsaken the Lord our God. Amen. Whereas you have forsaken the Lord your God. Then what else he says? Please read that. Second Chronicles 13, chapter 13 and verse 10. But as for us, but as for us, the Lord is our God. And we have not forsaken him. And we have not forsaken him. And the priest. And the priest. To the Lord, oh, minister to the Lord are the sons of, Aaron, the sons of Aaron and the Levites, and the Levites attend to their duties. Attend to their duties. Hallelujah. He says, we have an orderly way of worshipping the Lord. The previous verse we saw, right? Verse 8 and 9. 9 verse 9 he says, have you not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron and the Levites, and made yourselves Made for yourselves priests like people of the other lands. People nowadays make for themselves uh, servants of God. Self-made servants of God. 
as the other lands. But here he says, for us, the priests who minister to the Lord are the sons of Aaron and the Levites attend to their duties. Amen. Who are sons of Aaron? Who is Aaron? The word of God says, Hebrews 5, 5 verse 4. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 4. Please read it. And no man, and no man takes this honor to himself. Takes this honor to himself. But he who is called by God. But he who is called by God. Just as Aaron was. Just as Aaron was. Hallelujah. No one can become. The Lord says. Here yeah, the word of God says. Hallelujah. Take this honor to himself. But. He who was called by God just as Aaron was. So Aaron was called by God. Hallelujah. The called people, called people can only serve God. Amen. Hallelujah. And hallelujah, glory to God. Levi means out of the twelve tribes, God chose the tribe of tribe of Levi. Hallelujah. Levi. And for himself, he chose them for himself, separated them for himself to serve him. Hallelujah. So, people chosen by God are Levites. Amen. They are separated for the cause of Christ, separated for the uh, service of God. Hallelujah. People who are so separate themselves for the cause of God, they can be, hallelujah, called as Levites. Amen. Some people they do um, uh, what to say God service as well as nothing wrong in saying they say part time ministry we are all called to do uh, our part in the kingdom of God but when come when it comes to the service we cannot serve Jesus Himself said two masters Amen either they will um, love the one and despise the other Hallelujah so we cannot serve two masters. We have to completely, if somebody wants to serve the Lord, completely they have to serve Him with all their hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, we are, uh, if by in keeping the charge of the Lord, we are going in the right direction. Hallelujah. We are not doing anything on our own. But near, uh, in Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 4, please read it. They will turn their ears away from the uh, soul. Even previous verse, we can read it. Can you read that? For the time will come. For the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrines. When they will not endure sound doctrines. But according to the uh, previous desires, verse, also I think. Yeah, preach, verse three. Mm. Preach the word. Mm. Be ready in season. Be ready in season. And out of season. Out of season. Convince. Convince. Rebuke. Rebuke. Exhort. Exhort. With all long suffering. With all long suffering. And teaching. And teaching. This is the work of the servant of God. Preach the And doctrine. And doctrines. Doctrines. Doctrines of Jesus Christ. Doctrines of the apostles. Hallelujah. Sound teaching. Doctrines mean sound teaching. But this people, they just don't want this. Verse 3, the word of God here they say again, continue. For the time will come, For the time will come when they will not endure. When they will not endure sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. But according to their own desires. According to their own desires. Because they have itching Because they have itching ears. They will keep up for themselves. They will heap up for themselves teachers. teachers. Hallelujah. They choose teachers. Oh, which would suit their. Hallelujah. Desires, their own desires. And what will happen? And they will turn their ears They will away. turn their ears away from the truth. From the truth or they'll turn away from God. They will turn, turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to, and fables. Be turned aside to fables. 
In this one, Abijah in the Old Testament, he speaks to the children of Israel saying that Hallelujah for us. Hallelujah. God appointed servants of God are there who will, Hallelujah, teach in season, out of season, convince, rebuke, reprove, exhort. Hallelujah. And what will they do? Teaching sound doctrines. Hallelujah. He says, verse 10, we finish, right? And verse 11. They burn to the Lord every morning and every evening, burn sacrifices and sweet incense. Second Chronicles 13th chapter and verse 11. Here, Abijah speaks how he how they keep the charge of the Lord. Hallelujah. Third thing he says is they burn to the Lord every morning and every evening, burn sacrifices and sweet incense. Here he says they, they means priests. Now again we are going to see it in a different angle. According to New Testament, the word of God says in 1 Peter, 2nd chapter, Oh hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, verse 5 and also verse 9. Please read it for you. <clears throat> you also. You also. As as living stones are being built up a spiritual house are being built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood a holy priesthood to offer up to offer up spiritual sacrifices amen you have an office what is that holy priesthood for what to offer up spiritual sacrifices amen hmm Acceptable to God. Acceptable to God. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Verse 9. But you are a chosen generation. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A holy nation. His own special people. His own special people. That you may proclaim. That you may proclaim. The praises of him. The praises of him. Who called you out of darkness. Who called you out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. Into his marvelous, marvelous light. Amen. Royal priesthood. Hallelujah. You are the royal priesthood and you are expected to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the Lord. Amen. And Revelation chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 6. And has made us. And has uh, made us. Made us. Kings and priests. Kings and priests to his God and Father to his God. Jesus Christ made us kings and priests. Kings and priests to God his Father. To him be glory and dominion. To him be glory and dominion. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Who washed us? Verse 6. Mm, please to him who loved us. To him who loved us and washed us and washed us from our sins from our sins in his own blood. In his own blood. To him who loved us and washed us in his own blood from our sins. And has made us kings and priests. And has made us kings and priests to guard the God his father. Amen. So who are the priests and who are the kings nowadays? Oh, who loved Jesus Christ, whom he loved. Um, he loved us and he gave himself for us, right? And washed us with his precious blood. Those who are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, those who are made righteous through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, they are made, Jesus had made them through his precious blood. Hallelujah, glory to God, as kings and priests to God his Father. Amen. To offer our burnt sacrifices. Amen. So here, Abijah speaks over here, verse 11 will come back. They burn to the Lord every morning and every evening, burnt sacrifices. So we are expected to offer every morning, to keep the charge of the Lord every morning, every evening, burnt sacrifices. Hallelujah. We read in Peter, 1 Peter, 2nd chapter, verse 5. We are uh, priests called by God to offer for spiritual sacrifices. We have one sacrifices, means Romans 12, 
And verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that you offer your bodies as living sacrifice. Amen. Acceptable to the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are, hallelujah, but we are here to offer our bodies as living sacrifice. We know that is, oh, we are just offering completely ourselves to Him. We are not going to offer goats or sheep or, you know, uh, calves or anything like that, but we are going to offer our own bodies to the Lord. Amen. That's what God wants because this is the temple of the Lord. And hallelujah, we have to offer it holy and acceptable to the Lord. Amen. Uh, in Romans 12, 1 says, Offer yourself. This is the reasonable service. Amen. We have to give ourselves to the Lord. And there are other sacrifices. Sacrifices of praises are there. Good works are there. Hebrews 13 chapter. If you go home and read, you will see there. All kinds of spiritual sacrifices. It's, meant over, it, it, it's mentioned over there. Hallelujah. And um, they burn to the Lord evening, every morning and evening, burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. One and two, I think. Ephesians chapter 5, verses. Therefore be imitators of God. Yes. Therefore be imitators of God. As dear children. As dear children. And walk in love. And walk in love. As Christ also has loved. As Christ also has loved us. And given himself for us. And given himself for us. An offering. An offering. And a sacrifice to God. And a sacrifice to God. For a sweet smelling aroma. For a sweet smelling aroma. Sweet incense we saw there, right? So, Jesus Christ offered himself to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Hallelujah. God accepts us that way. How? Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. So, you also walk in love. That is the sweet incense for God. Amen. Nowadays, we, do, we don't see people uh, lose that. We people... Uh, they, 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 our God is a God of love, but children of God should possess this quality. It is a must. Amen. It is a sign that you belong to Christ. Hallelujah. The quality, love. Love covers multitude of sins. Hallelujah. Love endures. And First Corinthians 13 chapter. Hallelujah. You can... Hallelujah, go home and meditate on the qualities, hallelujah, characteristics of the love, how it can, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, glory to God, bring the divine nature into your life, hallelujah. So, walk in love as Christ also walked in love by offering himself as a sweet self smelling aroma to God, hallelujah. And also, uh, Revelation chapter 8 and verse 4 and chapter 5. Please read that. Verse 8. Revelation chapter 8, 5, verse 8. Revelation chapter 8 and verse 3. Please read that. 3 and 4. Now when he had taken the scroll. Now when he had taken, when the, he scroll, had taken the scroll. The four living the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb. Fell down before the lamb, each having a harp, each having a harp and golden bowls and golden bowls full of incense, full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Which are the prayers of the saints? Hallelujah! What does what does the sweet incense mean? Prayers. prayers of the saints of God. Revelations 8, 3 and 4. Then another angel, then another angel, having a golden censer, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar, came and stood at the altar, and he was given much incense, and he was given much incense, that he should offer it, that he, he should offer it, with the prayers of all the saints, with the prayer of all the saints, 
saints upon the golden altar upon the golden altar which was before the throne before the throne and, was, the, mm. and the smoke of the incense and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints with the prayers of the saints ascended before god ascended before god so are we just speaks when when keeping the charge of the lord the next part is prayers of the saints of God. Amen. Prayers of the righteous are effected in the presence of God. Hallelujah. People who are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, when they pray, it reaches the presence of God. It goes before the throne of God. Amen. Hallelujah. That is why prayer, prayer, people neglect this prayer life. They don't get time, they don't want to give time or they don't see, know the seriousness of hallelujah, pray to God. They say, oh, just like that we are saying something, no, it reaches God, have faith in God. Hallelujah. The prayers of the saints of God reaches, goes, reaches before the throne of God. Hallelujah. It is called the sweet incense. So the more we pray, the more we are remembered in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. God accepts it as sweet incense, sweet smelling aroma. Amen. So we God's people are expected to pray more. Not at least is one hour. Hallelujah. We have to increase in prayer time. Jesus Christ, when he was on this earth, hallelujah, glory to God, all throughout the night he prayed. Early in the morning he prayed. Whenever he got time after accomplishing his job, he just sent away his disciples and he isolated himself for prayers. Hallelujah. He always sought the Lord God, his Father, to speak to him, to have uh, communion with him. And we have to also all will give importance to prayer life. Amen. Lack of prayer will bring uh, 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 all kinds of things into our lives. There is an old saying, a worldly Christian, a prayerful Christian, worldliness will not be there in a prayerful Christian, praying Christian. Hallelujah. In a worldly Christian, prayers will not be there. Hallelujah. If you are worldly, you cannot pray. If you are praying, worldliness will not be there. Amen. The more prayer means the more connectivity with the kingdom of God, the more you are connected with the kingdom of God because it reaches the throne of God. Your prayers reaches the throne of God and gives you the connection with the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So the prayer is a must prayer life. Check out your prayer life today and set right your prayer life and increase your prayer time. Hallelujah. Personal prayer time and also get together uh, prayer time, family prayer time, everything is important individually, independently. Uh, 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 gathering together and praying is a must. Praying individually, personally, it's a must. Hallelujah. As a family, it's a must. Amen. So don't neglect that. You have to have your prayers and it has to reach the presence of God. Amen. And also, we'll come back to Second Chronicles chapter 13 and verse 11. They burn to the Lord every morning and every evening burnt sacrifices, sweet incense, and they also set the showbread in order on the pure gold table. Amen. They set the showbread. What is the showbread? Man shall not live by. We are spiritual people, yeah? We have to give spiritual sacrifices. Here the word of God says, Jesus Christ says, Man shall not, even the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. In Isaiah 55 verses 1 to 3, please read that. Isaiah 55 verses 1 to 3, please read that. Oh, everyone who thirsts. Oh, everyone who thirsts. Water, Come to the waters, and you who have no money, you who have mo no money, come by, come by and, and eat. Mm. Yes. Yes. Come. Come. Buy wine and buy milk. wine and milk without money. Without money and without price. Without price. 
Why do you spend money? Why do you spend money for what is not bread? For what is not bread? Mm. And your wages. And your wages. For what does not satisfy. For what does not satisfy. Mm. Listen to What is the bread now? Listen carefully to me. And eat what is good. And eat what is good. And let your soul delight itself in abundance. Let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear. Incline your ear. And come to me. And come to me. Here. Here. And your soul shall live. And your soul shall live. Mm. And I will make an everlasting covenant. Enough. With Hello. You. Here. And your soul shall live. Amen. Eat what is good. Hallelujah. Don't eat junk food. <laughs> Hallelujah. Eat what is good. The Lord says, I will give it to you. And your soul shall delight itself in abundance. Amen. And your soul shall live. If you hear diligently, hearken to the voice of the Lord, word of God, your soul shall live. Amen. Hallelujah. Your soul shall prosper. So the word of God. We saw prayers. Then now, word of God. Psalm 1. We know he who delights mm, in the, himself in the law of the Lord and meditates. In the word of God, day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the riverside. Hallelujah. Prosperity will be there. Prosperity in the soul first. People talk about prosperity. Uh, earthly ways. They say God shall prosper you. You shall be prosperous. God will bless you with that and this. All earthly things they speak about. Speak about earthly prosperity. But... According to God, the for prosperity starts with the soul. If your soul prosper, you shall prosper in every other thing, even in health. Hallelujah. That's, that is the demand of the Lord. God, all that the Lord wants is your soul to prosper. If you nurture the soul properly, automatically every other earthly blessings will follow. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. And he ends saying that goodness and mercy shall Follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. So, well, you have to nurture your soul for which uh, only the word of God and waiting in the presence of God, word of God, you have to meditate day and night with delight. As I always used to mention in the Bible College uh, students when I been to Ludhiana to preach, uh, in the youth conference there, uh, I was talking so vehemently and like, you know, about the word of God, how we have to deny, how we have to meditate on the word of God. And when I questioned the people, uh, youth, uh, one hour youth got up and said from the Bible college uh, that not only day and night, if whole day we are meditating on that only. With so much of, you know, bitterness and so much of, uh, what to say, Oh, hallelujah, glory to God, because he was totally dumb, touched with all kinds of honor. Every day we have to read the word. So much of him disinterested in the word of God, so much of, uh, what to say, aversion I could see in his speech. In front of all the crowd, <laughs> whole day we are doing that only. He caught up and said that. Then immediately the Holy Spirit helped me saying that, did you read that? You have to read it with delight. Only then you will find. Hallelujah. Only then you will be enriched. Only then your soul shall prosper. Only then you will be nurtured by the word of God. Amen. If you read it for the duty's sake or as reading some lessons, it won't help you much. But if you read it right tonight, you will find treasures in there. He was dumbfounded. Immediately he thanked Hallelujah for opening his understanding. Even after the meeting, he came forward and said, Thank you for the insight you have given. Hallelujah. But for the word of God, you should have the love for the word of God. You should have the love for the truth. Only then you will be benefited. Hallelujah. Otherwise, Oh, hallelujah, it will be out of compulsion you may read. It is of no use. You will, the words will not be, oh, hallelujah, glory to God, open before you. 
Amen. God has to open the heart for you to understand the word. And when will that happen? God opened the heart of Lydia. Why? Because she came here. She wanted to know. She wanted to listen. She wanted to hallelujah, glory to God. And she gave complete attention to the word of God with reverence. So God said, okay, she's the right candidate. Let me open the understanding for her. She, so God opened the heart of Lydia to understand the word of God. Hallelujah. Others who listen to it carelessly and, you know, without much reverence, God cannot open their understanding. God, even Jesus opened the hearts of his disciples in Luke's Gospel 24 for them to understand the word of God. Amen. About Lydia, it's given in Acts of the Apostles 16 chapter. You can go home and read, we don't have time. So the word of God is very, very important and it, is, it has been, where, where it is there? It has been kept in order on the, on the pure gold table. Which is the gold table? Which is the gold table? Please read it. Second mm. Corinthians 3rd chapter, verse 2. Mm. Please read it. For as much as ye are manifestly declared, For as much as ye are manifestly declared, Manifestly declared, To be the epistle of Christ, To, the, to be the epistle of Christ, Ministered by us, Ministered by us, Written not the be, Written not with ink, but the spirit of the living God. Uh, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God. Not with tables of stone. Not with tables of stone. But in fleshly tables of the heart. With, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Amen. Where the shoe bread is placed, in order, it is the fleshly table of the heart. How it is written? With the Spirit of God. Amen. The Spirit of God writes. If you listen carefully, the Holy Spirit will write upon your heart. There are lots of other places in Ezekiel that the Lord mentions how he will write his, hallelujah, laws in the hearts of his people. And in the Ezekiel 18 and 31, is it? 36. Seven nineteen. Well, Hebrews chapter eight and verse ten also. Please read that. Hebrews chapter eight and verse ten. Hebrews chapter eight and verse ten. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Israel. After those days. After those days. Say the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds. I will put my laws into their minds. And write them in their hearts. And write them in their hearts. Hallelujah. So you have to keep even Psalm 119. There the psalmist says, Oh, I have kept your word in my heart. Hallelujah. So you have to keep the word of God. Fill your heart with the word of the true living God which has life and spirit in it. Hallelujah. So the more you are filled with the law, word of the Lord your God, you can keep the charge of the Lord your God. Amen. Then again we will come back to 2 Chronicles chapter 13 and verse 11. What does he say there? Hallelujah, glory to God. They also set the showbread in order on the pure gold table and the lampstand of gold with its lamps to burn every evening. Lampstand of gold with its lamp. Last week we saw in Proverbs 20, uh, 20, 8, 27, 20 and 27. Proverbs 20, 27, the spirit of the man is given, it's a lamp given by God and it searches itself. So the lampstand denotes the spirit of man. Lampstand of gold. Gold means divinity or faith according to 1 Peter 1st chapter 7th verse. Your faith will be tested as pure gold. So the lampstand of gold with its lamps. So your spirit, they will Hallelujah, glory to God, to burn every evening. That means every day, checking our lives, analyzing ourselves. 
ourselves, judging ourselves, so that we are not judged by others, so that we are not condemned. Hallelujah. When the whole world is condemned, we will be rebuked. Hallelujah. According to 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 24, verses onwards, if, if you read. So, lampstand, burning the lampstand every evening means every day we are expected to check our lives with the help of the Holy Spirit, with a, in, a, in the human spirit, hallelujah, where we have erred and where we have gone wrong and we have to sit right. You should not accumulate your faults, hallelujah, then and there, then and there, take it before the Lord, hallelujah, and rectify your ways before God. And that's how you can keep the charge of the Lord your God. Amen. So if you do this, he says, For we keep the command of the Lord, or we keep the charge of the Lord our God, and but you have forsaken him. Verse 12, he says, If you keep the charge of the Lord your God, now look, God himself is with, is with us as our head, as our captain. He's the captain of the house. Amen. He will be with you. And his priests with sounding trumpets to sound the alarm against you, against our enemies. The priests of God, the servants of God, the priests sound an alarm against your enemy. And the enemies will be defeated. They will be put to shame. In the word of God says, Oh, the people, children of Israel were subdued before the children of Judah. And the children of Judah prevailed because they relied on the Lord their God. Amen. And Cherubim did not recover strength again in the days of Abijah. Amen. Your enemies will not recover strength as long as you keep the charge of the Lord your God. Amen. You shall always prevail. Shall we close our eyes and look to God?